Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Our first major conversation this morning is going to be on the uh, meeting uh, with the federal government and Nigerian governors over electricity tariff and, of course, uh, for price in Nigeria. Uh, this is a follow-up meeting to um, discussions from the past and, of course, a tripartite committee that was set up uh, sometime uh, late last year to come you know, with um, you know, an agreement on a, a fixed price for petrol and electricity. Uh, we've been joined this morning by Mr. Stephen Aya, Public Affairs Analyst. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. And we also have uh, Martin Uzegu, uh, who is uh, the President, National Union of Electricity Employees. Thank you so much for joining us also. Okay, um, I'm going to start with Mr. Stephen Aya. Um, we'll mark, connect with Martin in a bit. Um, so let's start with, you know, asking... Um, about the tripartite meeting or committee that was set up sometime last year um, to come with a, a, a better pricing plan and a better um, agreement with regards for price and electricity tariff. Um, what do you think that they were able to achieve you know, from that committee and that meeting? Uh, I, I don't know what we were able to achieve because uh, when it comes to the issue of pricing of electricity, for example, I think it has to do with services as well. Now we are talking about pricing of electricity. And meanwhile, the price of the services that they are offering is below par. So when you have a situation like that, you begin to ask yourself, what are you pricing? What, what, what are you offering? You see, if you go to the market to buy something, you you, you you buy what is offered and you price the, 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 the what is offered based on what you see. The, the committee came up with a pricing list, came up with a pricing structure, which looks fine. But then the truth of the matter is that the product people are expected to buy is not really available. Okay, so it might be a struggle getting... Uh... Um, to hear Mr. Sivinaya. All right. How about Mr. Uzegu? Do we have you here? Yeah, I am. How are you? Okay. Talking about uh, electricity now, we've seen, you know, reports, you know, months and months ago, even as, as recently as January, about an increase in electricity tariff. But Chris Ngige just yesterday said that all discos, distribution companies that had, quote unquote, illegally increased the payment or the price of electricity for people on bands C and D to so bands A and B for them to pay much higher would be penalized and that everybody who has been affected can report them. I don't know. How long do you think or do you really think that this can be achieved for the federal government to penalize these discos and uh, for the complaints of Nigerians about, you know, the hike in fuel? Mr. Uzegu, do we still have you there? Yeah, 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 I, I can hear you. Last year, September, when they had the first increase, the uh, committee was set up to look into several issues that necessitated the increase, which is that increase in electricity tariff. Uh, mind you, there was an act, 2005, electricity. Uh, Power Sector Reform Act, which may set the net to using a methodology called MITO to be uh, increasing the electricity tariff two times in a year, or uh, a major increase by five years, which could be spread around 15 years. Now, but the issue that we are having is that the Conditions being used in determining such increase are not tenable at this present situation that Nigeria found themselves in. I want you the issues that have down. to do with cost of gas, the issue that has to do with infrastructure investment of the discourse, the issue that has to do with um, energy generation from the discourse, inflation rate. And when you look at all these indices, most of these things are imparted in the Nigerians. And we felt that NEC, who is the regulator 
has that not been doing justice in that respect, in the sense that they have been insensitive to the plight of the Nigerians. Now, this meeting, the last meeting that was supposed to have, which was the place where the committee should be able to tender their report. Now, after the next meeting of the level, we made some recommendations based on our discoveries that the gas which is being used to power the generations are being dollarized. In other words, the gas we are producing in Nigeria are being sold to the Jenko in foreign currencies, which is against the tendency of the sovereignty of the country. Now, at the end of the day, we discovered that even the infrastructure investment cost being, uh, you know, uh, being uh, used by the disco are uh, factored into the cost of the tariff. Now, the prices which are dollarized are charged at $2.80 uh, $2 as against the international price cost of $1 to $1.50. Now, we have made our recommendations that, that the government should look at review the cost of uh, gas uh, charging to the discos and, and the, and the jungles to $1 to $1.50. That will enable the charges on the electric tariff to reduce. Now, the infrastructure, which we are talking about, that which the digital should be able to invest, because the energy sector, like you know, has been privatized. It's over seven to eight years. Now, the government has spent almost 1.5 trillion in subsidy, in terms of uh, uh, funding the sector, even after privatization. So, why would there be charging the consumers or uh, uh, putting the cost of their inefficiency on the consumers. Because when you talk about infrastructure, the district, the district who bought this company should be able to provide those infrastructures. Okay. Now they are building it into the cost of tariffs, thereby increasing the tariff charged to the consumer. All right, Mr. Ozegu, how do we check these inefficiencies you've mentioned, these loopholes? How do we properly address them? We can check it, first of all, if our government is sincere and responsible to the, to the citizens. Now, they have regulators who have that mandate to check the performance agreement of the disco between the federal government and the disco. Now, based on that performance agreement, that should have expired after five years. Now, looking at the present situation, they have extended it, and this is almost seven years. Now, even though that they are talking about reviewing that agreement by the end of 2021. So you see that government admission has not been sincere in terms of checkmating what the investors are doing. Now, we also need to ensure that the investors are funding that sector because one is that when they wanted to buy this sector, then there were three key cardinal points which the government raised. You must have a foreign direct investment. You must have technical ability. I know, and you must have the capacity, managerial ability. Now, you and I know that these investors have never provided any foreign direct investment in this sector. That is why a lot of people are having issues of transformer, they're having issues of pillar pillars, no meter, and they are not replacing them. Now, the issue of mass, mass meter program, which government has rolled out, they, are, they have tried to sabotage it because none of them has invested in this area. That would have been an area that would have breached the gap of estimated billing. Hmm. 
And that equally also reduces the the cost of uh, so the, 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 the experiences they are having in technical and commercial losses. All right. Um, Mr. Now, government are no longer yeah, looking Mr. at these directions to ensure that this, uh, the discos or the investors be able to apply all this approach to ensure efficiency in that sector. All right, Mr. Ozogo, let me, let me quickly now, step in here. Um, of course, if you're talking to Mitterin, I'm, I'm sure that the Nigerian government, I'm sure you're aware also, has uh, tried to step in, you know, to assist with uh, metering program for uh, Nigerians. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, how much success, you know, we uh, will be able to record with that. But of course, I'm sure that, you know, we, we, we will go far enough. But I want you to go back to um, something that you said. Are you, are you, are you, from your statements, it seems you're saying the distribution companies, the generation companies, and of course, transmission you know, are all somehow incapacitated or incapable of handling the volume of work that is required to, to you know, make electricity better for Nigerians? No, no, they are. If there are commitments, now, you can imagine the, the, the transmission sector, because these are two different sectors. Yes, though no, it's a change, because the generation cannot do without the transmission, and transmission cannot do without the discourse. Yes. Now, but if we generate and transmit, and the distro doesn't have the capacity to, to distribute it to the consumers, then everything boils down to the fact that there are inefficiencies. Now, the issue is that the generation is not even, even the little that we have, the distro cannot distribute it. The transmission says they have the capacity to wheel up to 7,000 megawatts. As I speak with you, we are generating less than 4,000 megawatts. And the discos cannot even distribute these 4,000 megawatts. There is a result to rejecting load in some areas. It's always in the news. Oh. Now, what are we trying to say? That they don't have the capacity to even distribute the little one that we, we have. Now, how much more if we generate up to 10,000 megawatts? Okay. Yeah. Quickly, quickly so, move into talking about, because why we're having this conversation is really about the meeting that the government will have with governors tomorrow. Uh, Chris Ngige, uh, minister, had mentioned um, in that news uh, briefing that, you know, they were done talking with Labour and the NLC, and now it was time for the governors to decide um, on uh, better pricing um, 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 figures. So I, I want your thoughts on what, you know, this meeting can achieve. If the, the committee that was set up has um, put forth their report and their recommendations, what role do you think that the governors and the federal government, you know, will achieve, you know, in this meeting? Yes, the, the role that can achieve, one, well, just like I earlier said, if they are sincere and alive to their responsibility, they should be able to yield to the recommendation made by the level. Labor has provided some recommendations. One, well, Labor said the gas which is being used to generate electricity, which is being charged in dollars, twenty dollars per eighty cents, should be reduced to one dollar between one dollar to one dollar fifty cents. That will enable the gentles who are spending more on gas cost of gas to be able to reduce the prices and which, which they will be using to, uh, to charge for the electricity generated. And that is where the next comes in. Now, the issue of infrastructure, we have asked the government not to transfer the infrastructure deficiency on the uh, consumers. Now, he should Ensure that the discos are funded, or the discos should be able to fund the infrastructure in, within their areas, because these areas have been privatized. Now, we're also talking about review of privatization, because the privatization has failed completely. Eight years down the line, we cannot talk about more than 4,000 megawatts. Before privatization, 
the then at the then NEPA or PSCL was having the generation capacity within 4,000 to 5,000 megawatts. But eight years down the line, the thing has fallen down. And yes, there is a performance agreement which was reached between government and those investors. So they should review it and give it to people who are ready to finance this in, uh, uh, sector. Because the present people don't have the capacity to do that. Now, the issue of metering, we have made submission that government should localize the production of metering. We have uh, uh, manufacturing facilities in Lagos, like Ojek and Mamas. When you go there now, you discover that a lot of meters are there, waiting for the discos to come and purchase. Now, many of them have refused to do that. Even when, to do, even when you went to go to the uh, discourse uh, office, you see a lot of meters lying fallow without being installed in the consumer's apartment. Mm. All right. That is, uh, that is uh, indirectly uh, trying to make the government look as if they are not doing a lot. All right, Mr. Martin. So, the government agree. should make sure that they should put a monitoring team between the federal government the, and the level to supervise what is happening. And these are part of the recommendations that the, the level made. So if they can be able to go in line with this, I think Nigerians can be able to have the feelings of increase in generation, which will result to reduction in prices of electricity. Okay, right. uh, Mr. Unzego, um, let me take you up on, on your last statement. You are the president of the National Union of Electricity Employees, so I bet you better understand yeah. the body language of the government when it comes to issues about you know, electricity like this. So how long do you think we, or how soon do you think Nigerians will be able to enjoy better and affordable power? Because uh, Mr. Chris Ngigi said recently, he said, and I quote, some paperwork has to be done, and then the price of electricity would go down, and consumers who benefit. So do you think, or do you see this happening as soon as possible, maybe in the first quarter of this year? Well, there is nothing that is not possible. It's only the commitment as a disease to do the job. Now, but I don't see the present discourse, the present investors, helping the government to achieve its end. That is the more reason why government should, as a matter of urgency, review the privatization uh, law. All right. To enable Martin. credible, sincere investors to take up this responsibility. All right, hold on, uh, Martin. Now, the issue of the uh, uh, kind, kindly hold on. We, we, we need to take a short break and uh, we'll, we'll be back with you. And of course, uh, Stephen uh, Aya will be joining us also. Welcome back to The Breakfast. It still is a conversation on the federal government and governors meeting tomorrow to talk uh, further on uh, petrol pricing and, of course, electricity tariffs here in Nigeria. We've been speaking with Mr. Martin Zogu and uh, Stephen Aya, who's just joining us uh, um, once again. Uh, welcome back, uh, Mr. Aya. I want to bring you uh, in here and, of course, uh, get your thoughts on this meeting tomorrow. Um, I'm, looking, I'm expecting that Nigerians are going to be eager to hear you know, what this meeting has to um, offer and what they can possibly achieve. So I want to get your expectations from this meeting. What you know, do you expect that the governors will you know, be um, saying tomorrow at this meeting? Well, uh, first of all, I expect that the government will put politics aside and trash this issue of electricity supply seriously. Because it is a major reason why Nigeria is still backward in terms of development, in terms of uh, economic uh, movement upward. Um, the government needs 
to look at this issue very critically. Because in the first place, the supply of, of electricity as a product is very, very low. Uh, in some cases, you pay money in system. And if you don't have supply, you cannot uh, encourage you to pay or to buy the products that you have available. And that is that's just a simple economic analysis or industry. So I expect the government, the government and the president to look at this issue critically. If, if for example, we decide to adopt the report of the committee and go ahead with of prices, then they have to come around to a much more reasonable price that will consume, I mean, that will convince a lot of Nigerians to buy the product or to consume. Because as of now, we are also talking, we will know that a lot of Nigerians are interested when it comes to electricity supply. So, so most of them are not even interested in paying their bills in the first instance. All right, so, because of that, you have to come to a level playing ground. Well, every Nigerian will be encouraged to pay. And that also means that both the government and private investors have to also invest in the, in the electricity production and generation, as well as distribution. If we have to stable the distribution, and people are getting like this thing for 18 hours, it makes proper sense for people to start convincing themselves that, okay, we can pay. Okay, but, but I, I, I want to ask... You are literally getting out of life you need to spend that eight hours in it. Yeah, but I want to ask, you know, about petrol, uh, the petrol, you know, uh, price um, aspect now. The reasons the government has continuously given for the continuous increment in the price of petrol, um, how, what can the governors do about that? And, and, you know, is there an agreement that can be made, you know, in the meeting tomorrow that will change those factors that have continued, you know, uh, the increase in petrol pricing. You see, the issue of petrol is quite a pitiful thing. If this country has petroleum, and it seems played about with politics all over the place, the issue of modular refineries are there. If we have modular refineries that can at least crack it onto petroleum levels, we will have petrol available, and the price has been forced to go down. But there are some cabals, let me use that word, that have continuously frustrated the issue of modular refineries, even the investment of refineries. So, because of that, at the end of the day, we find that the price keeps going up because we are importing the fuel. We already have four major refineries in this country. They are not functioning. And the government is not even interested in selling them to private investors, for example. Mr. Aya, let me butt in here because we're really running out of time. I, I wanted to get your take on the situation of subsidies because just yesterday, Chris Ngege said the federal government has no money for subsidy. But we've seen how previous governments have tried and failed to remove subsidy. Even President Muhammad Buhari tried that in 2015. It was later reinstated. And we've heard, you know, proponents and opponents of this, some saying subsidy should, uh, should be maintained. You know, government should continue paying subsidy. And others saying it should be removed because the money spent on sub subsidy could be invested in, uh, you know, in several other sectors of the economy. But the IMF and World Bank, we've seen what they think about this in Nigeria, saying that subsidy should be targeted to favor the poor because it's uh, disproportionate favors high income households at the moment. So looking at all these factors, what's your stance on subsidies and what the federal government should be should be looking at doing and discussing when they meet tomorrow? The issue of subsidies to Nigeria um, is a soft way of keeping money out of government. The, the, the Nigerian businessmen who are using petroleum importation has used the uh, use of subsidies I found money from government easily. Even government of use it if I found money in this private pocket. Now, subsidy is supposed to be something that Nigeria should enjoy since uh, the, the local refineries are not producing enough oil. And since so they are paying at any rate, they are attached to something. Because like, the Nigerian set of is right now that Nigeria has paid that and they don't get anything in return. No services at all. No light, no good food, no food, nothing. So the subsidy of petroleum was supposed to be like something that they get back for paying that tax. But 
Unfortunately, they are not getting it because of high level of corruption. Uh, right. I don't know if one that removing the subsidy will solve the issue because, as you can see, the government uh, has told um, us to that they removed the subsidy completely. And then initially the issue has come back again, and then now they say they have removed the subsidy. Yeah, the audio the audio is not pretty clear at your end and we're actually running out of time. So I want to thank you very much, uh, Stephen Ayer, public affairs analyst, for joining us. And uh, Mr. You, Martin Uzegu, who's the president of the National Union of Electricity Employees. Thank you both for coming on the breakfast this morning. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having me. All right. All thank right. you for having me. We apologize for the uh, poor quality uh, of sound in that interview, but... Um, we're moving on to other things. And, uh, of course, uh, when the meeting does happen tomorrow between mm -hmm. the federal government and uh, the governors, uh, we definitely will have another conversation on uh, feedback from that meeting. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be speaking about the extinction of pangolins here in Nigeria and how uh, the Nigerian government, all Nigerian people and farmers, you know, may have failed pangolins. Uh, we're speaking with an environmentalist next. <laughs>